Hello everybody, so my name is Connie Kenneth and so welcome to my channel. So please, 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 if you want to support my channel, so go ahead and subscribe, you know, turn on your post notifications on. And so let us build this community where we're going to also participate, um, you know, in telling the African narrative. So I'm quite impressed by how good, you know, African YouTubers are doing. And um, I'm so grateful that finally Africans are telling the African narrative and not, you know, people from other places just coming and telling, you know, things that are not accurate, you know, like Africa is portrayed in the West as uh, poor, as, you know, death, as poverty, diseases, all these negative connotations that we tend to, you know, that we tend to attribute to, to Africa. So I'm so grateful. And so if you would like me, um, you know, to, you know, to, 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 to have a reaction video to one of your favorite African YouTubers. So just let me know, leave, you know, leave their names in the comment and I'll be so grateful to do a reaction um, to their videos and let's change the narrative. So welcome, welcome, welcome. So today I'm going to react to what Demaya's recent series of videos that he's been doing in South Sudan. So I'm going to start with the very first one. Uh, they warned me about South Sudan, but I did not listen. So this is, I think this is going to be very interesting. So let's get straight into the video. Hey, have you heard about South Sudan? Hmm. The country South Sudan? Yes. yes. And would you encourage anyone who wants to visit South Sudan? No, 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 no. I would never encourage anybody, even my friend, not even my family. This is interesting because it sounds ironic, but honestly, I guess it has been the case for so many years, you know, people um, having some, you know, some negative ideas about Sudan, which were accurate in the past, but today things have changed. But let's, let me just think this is um, ironic. Why? Why not? I have heard bad things about that place. Whoa, shortage of water. I mean, a whole lot about them. So okay. I'm very scared, even myself, even if a friend invites me to that place, you know, I will you not never... encourage. <laughs> no, 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 no. So like, I'm going to South Sudan tomorrow. If I should pay your flight ticket and everything for you to come to me, with me to South Sudan, will you go? I don't know. <laughs> no promises. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I want to know, um, what do you think of South Sudan? So I don't know, like, I've, I don't, I never heard much about South Sudan. Yeah, I, she's right. I mean, we never really hear about South Sudan in a positive way. So I think she's going to say, well, I know South Sudan, but I don't think I would go there. So <laughs> I think that's what she's going to say. Like, OK, yeah, I love it, but from afar. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a cool country. You think it's a cool country? Yeah, it's a cool country, but going there? <laughs> I've never thought about it. <laughs> would, would you go if somebody offers? I don't think so. South Sudan, the world's newest country that is famous for war and violence, making it one of the dangerous countries to visit in the world. You know, when you look at uh, the travel advisory, uh, when you look at most African countries, it's always like red warning you know it's never green it's never green like safe um, most of the travel advisories from the west is um either there are some places which are red some are orange and and so it's it doesn't really like give a positive image about africa so you know yes you just see images like these like the war and and hunger and water shortage so i'm so happy that what am i finally it's probably going to show, you know, uh, another side of Sudan uh, in, in these videos. Let's have a big round of applause for the Western media. Are you also scared to visit South Sudan because of what the media has been portrayed? Leave a comment and just let me know. On the 1st of March 2021, I received an email from ancient South Sudan inviting me to visit the youngest country. Honestly, Wadamaya, he should be like the African president. I wish there was like an African president because, I mean, you can imagine, 
I mean, I've followed him for probably since Corona. No, just a few months ago. And when I see, I've seen his story and everything, I'm like, wow, this guy has really come from far. And he finally understood how important it is for him to tell the African narrative. And it's it's wonderful. Now people are reaching, countries are reaching out to him, you know, just because they know that he portrays like, um, you know, he's, he's the image of Africa and he's, he has become. And I'm so proud to say that, you know, he deserves it. So good job. In the world. I googled it and I was terrified because everything that I saw was extremely negative. But since I'm on a journey to change the narratives of Africa, I had to take the risk. South Sudan with Maya, welcome. You made it to South Sudan? South Sudan. <laughs> Yo, so I finally made it to South Sudan. Welcome to the youngest country in the world, South, South Sudan. Sudan. Now, the you know the Sudan way. Oh, it looks like the Kenyan flag, but you know. <laughs> the colors are similar. Yeah, this South Sudan, you know, South Sudan is one of the youngest countries in the world. You know, by recent times we have a lot of crisis, but now we are in peace. We are proud to be South Sudanese. Though you come from anywhere, you come to South Sudan, feel at home. South Sudan is a peaceful country in the world. So let the world know, South Sudan is very peaceful. You can come and enjoy South Sudan like your mother home. I'm sorry guys, I just keep pausing, but I love this. I love what's going on. I love what I'm seeing right now. And I think when they say that South Sudan is the youngest country in Africa, it's because it just came out of years of war and instability, political instability. And I feel that it's young because there are so many opportunities and I hope that, you know, the Sudanese people, the refugees can come back home and, you know, reconstruct the country. And that would be so awesome, you know, for South Sudan. So there are so many opportunities and I can't wait to watch. Uh, I know there are many other, you know, uh, videos, uh, you know, from Award Maya, you know, with all the entrepreneurs in South Sudan. So I can't wait to watch those two. So, um, you know, and people are so right to go back home and reconstruct South Sudan, so good job. I am not here to tell you that South Sudan is a perfect place to live in. Neither am I here to tell you that South Sudan is the most dangerous country to ever visit as the media has always been portrayed. But if you see me walking in the street of Juba without dodging bullet, then you have to understand that South Sudan is not what you think. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Take care, take care. You know, you're going to die. You know, just be careful. But no, it's just a car. It's not a bullet. And wow. So I love this. So funny. <laughs> <laughs> I respect the people of this beautiful country because it's a country with the most resilient people with an unquenchable spirit to prosper despite the years of challenges. <laughs> Can we all give a round of applause for the beautiful people of South Sudan? A roundabout on point. Welcome to South Sudan, the land of giants. I feel, I feel like a dwarf in this country, man. Oh, can we just appreciate the melanin? Oh my goodness, look at that. The land of the Nile, the land of culture. Africa is wonderful.
one people. I feel like I'm watching the Maasai right now, you know, from Kenya and Tanzania. <laughs> Crazy. So, wow. Africa is just one, one people. We're very diverse, 64 tribes with the different cultures. 64 tribes in South Sudan? That's crazy. Wow. I didn't know because I know in Kenya we are 42, 43 tribes. So let me know if I'm wrong. I think we're 42 or 43 tribes in Kenya. So wow. So that's a lot. That's a lot. And let's appreciate the melanin. <laughs> oh my goodness. She's so pretty. Just with different ways of doing things. Because uh, hide is attached to cows or dowries. So if I am tall, that will measure the number of cows I get for my parents. So with your hides. Wow. So yes, because I know in South Sudan, cows are everything to them. You know, everything to them. If, and if I'm not wrong, they never eat uh, cow meat because, you know, I mean, cows are everything to them. So they treasure them so much. You know, the number of cows you have, the richer you are. So, oh my God, I didn't know. I had no idea, you know, when it comes to dairy, it's more like, you know, because of your height. Because I know in Kenya, for example, um, it's, it depends on education, how educated you are and stuff like that. So, wow. Okay. Nice to know. Are you kidding me? I have a sister who got married with 500. Cows? Yeah, because she's tall. She's taller than you? She's my height mate, and also because she's educated, so they consider education and height. The youngest nation in the world and the youngest nation in Africa, where we're trying still to discover everything about ourselves, we would love people to come in and discover with us all the different aspects of it. Um, it's always a negative out there about South Sudan, but there's a lot of positive on the other side. Uh, culture is beautiful. Uh, it's you know, the African culture is just beautiful. And and for the youngest nation, yes, I think and I believe strongly there are so many things that are yet to be discovered in this beautiful country. And I hope that, you know, they will reconstruct it. And, you know, uh, and I, I think they will for sure. For sure they will. So love it. It's a very beautiful land. You can come do a lot of safaris, do a lot of cruising. The Nile is one of the most beautiful things that you can ever see, especially in this side of the world, since um, since it's, it's very young and it's very flowy here. It's not like when you see it in Sudan or you see it in Egypt, it's very different. And uh, when it's come to, to the, we're talking about investment, it's a young country, need infrastructures, need investment. Uh, very welcoming people, so normally you feel at home whenever you're around. So, welcome home, welcome South Sudan. After being in South Sudan for 10 good days, I was so impressed to see what young... Yo, can you tell me, um, so South Sudan is a country, so North Sudan is another country. Are they two different countries as a whole? the north sudan and south sudan can somebody please tell me in the comments below thank you the south sudanese doing to change the narratives of their own country by investing in their country of which i think it's so beautiful oh my goodness i just love you know the, the the melanin i love i remember as a child you know when we had the you know the the, the south the, the sudanese refugees in kenya and I would just admire them. There was the melanin, the, the, the tall, beautiful, you know, women and men. Oh, oh my goodness. And I think she's in one of, I think I saw this lady in one of the other videos from Wardemeyer. I think it was uh, the, thumb, the thumbnail. So I will, I'm looking forward to watching that too. Something like this was really beautiful. And I can't wait to share these stories with you. All the way from Ghana, I'm sure the stories that you heard was not pleasant about South Sudan. No, they told me not to you, come. Exactly, you're probably, you know, uh, <laughs> expecting to be in bunkers or hiding behind trees from bullets, <laughs> but uh, this is it. Whoa. This is the story that's never been told. Whoa. Yes. So, like, you guys are blessed with the river now, and you decided to create something like this for people to have fun in their own country. And that is the main motive of uh, Gecko Adventures. We wanted to show the world the one of the most we have so many beauties of south sudan but mm. out of the many beauties mm. the river now this is one of the longest in the world 
But look, let me tell the story as you can see it here. Me and you here standing in South Sudan. What you see in the news is not the same thing that you see as you're here with me. So that's what we're here to tell, and uh, we need the whole world to know that just apart from uh, the, the history of South Sudan, we are hopeful and we uh, we're here to change the narratives, and the future is bright for this country. When I and let's appreciate how. Africans as a whole are so good at dancing and they've got the vibe, you know, the flow. I arrived in Juba. Shockingly, I did not see any starving children on the streets as the media was showing. I did not see, of course, the military, but it was not to that extent as it was being portrayed. And then another thing that I saw in the market for sure. She has the, the, the Kenyan accent. So, or do Sudanese have Kenyan accent or was she brought up? Or did she grow up in Kenya or something? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Was the fact that there was heavy dependence on importation. We were pretty much importing more than 80% of all the fresh produce in, in, the, in the country yeah. from outside. Yeah, sometimes some of the produce are being imported all the way from India and Brazil. And it really got me to thinking, you know, why are we importing when we have vast arable land and we have resources we have our majestic Nile just by our fingertips why don't we use that so that was an opportune moment for me to really try to bridge the gap of food insecurity in my home country yeah. welcome to south sudan welcome to Juba. welcome to rudy bottles this is where a group of young south sudanese people came you know we started a place where we can have fun get out of doing hustle you know Come together as a united 64 tribe, you know, show the beauty of what South Sudan is supposed to be, change the narrative of what people think about South Sudan, and give them the beauty, the fun, and all the activities that unite South Sudan as a whole motherfucking country. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but wait, it's not just South Sudanese people that are investing in their own country. We've got other people from different African countries also investing in South Sudan. And I think this man right here from Cameroon would definitely inspire you. Hi, um, I'm Ate, Ate Taku. I'm originally from Cameroon. And I've been in South Sudan since uh, December 2011. I came here four months after independence, which was in July 2011. And I've worked in... Yo, guys, July 2011. The South Sudanese people gained independence in July 2011. And we are in May 2020. Wow. Wow. I, I, I have nothing. I think it just, wow. Okay. Let me not just say anything, but I'm happy that, you know, the, everything now is getting back, you know, getting back to normal. And, you know, the South Sudanese people, you can do this and you are doing a great job already. And I'm so grateful. It might seem late, which it is, you know, um, but I think we just have to build the nation again and not look back and, of course, learn from the past mistakes so, you know, the, you know, the South Sudanese people can move forward. And I am just appalled to see 2011. 2011? Seriously? Wow. So, good job. And just keep doing what you're doing. Uh, South Sudan since then. I am, or my family is actually based in Cape Town and I work on a rotation basis, so basically working for like six weeks, I go home for three weeks to the family. Um, like I said, I've been here since 2011, I'm working oil and gas, uh, basically help oil companies that produce oil and sell it to the market. Um, prior to coming here, I worked in several other countries, but since 2011 I've been here and I worked till 2016. I took off two years and then I came back again in 2018. Again, South Sudan, very good country. Uh, like I said, almost 10 years I've been working and living here. Um, never had any issues of uh, concern. Obviously, there's been few conflicts here and there, but uh, we've been able to survive through it and uh, worked uh, in a comfortable environment. Um, again, yeah, I guess what he's trying to say, there is hope. You know, just like any other place, you, you will always have troubles, um, but there is hope. And I feel that the day Africans as a whole, the whole continent will come together, we can do tremendous things. You know, Pan-Africa, that shit is, uh, it's, it's so powerful. And I think 
we as Africans still don't really, you know, we don't really uh, recognize that. And I think it's a pity because uh, we can do so many things as Africans as a whole if we come together. You know, it's a thing of togetherness. If we come together, we can move mountains. Pan-Africa is so powerful because when you think about it, people from the West come to Africa for resources, for resources. So we've got everything. We've got arable land, just like the lady said. We've got it. We, we, we have so many resources. But if we come together as Africa and and build Africa as Africans, for Africans, um, that is so powerful. And I think and I hope that one day, I mean, the African leaders will just set aside some of the, you know, the egotistical, <laughs> you know, um, ambitions and just think for Africa and for the African people. And then we can do so much as Africans. Pan-Africa, it could be so powerful. Like any other place, it's not easy, it has its challenges, but I will focus more on the strengths and uh, the good parts of the country. But overall, like I said, very positive place, a lot of opportunities. Um, apart from the oil and gas, which is my background, um, South Sudan, I mean, construction, quite big here. Um, new country, new opportunities. Agriculture, it's a huge opportunity in this country. Um, I would say less than 1% of it exploited yet. Um, principally because a lot of stuff is imported from outside. So just either for local production and eventually for export, um, huge opportunities here. It's a big country, um, relatively flat, um, water, uh, good humidity, um, small population, but uh, like I said, a very good opportunity for exports. As a foreigner living in South Sudan, do you feel safe in here? Um, to be honest, I feel very safe. Um, Obviously, you have to guard, like anyway, if I'm in New York, if I'm in London, I guard my surroundings. I don't go into neighborhoods I don't know. Um, obviously, what you do is you hang out with friends who know their, their way around if you're, if you're just visiting. Um, you obviously avoid places where you're not comfortable with. And if you never take a risk in life, in all areas in life, then you will never know. So I think... That the best thing is just to go to the country and you have so many people who are so surprised when they go to Africa and they're like what this is this is Africa and you know and I think all those negative things about Africa people need to just stop listening to that and travel to Africa and say to yourselves for yourselves that I mean it's great and it's not just about insecurity safety and all that that is just not Africa. So let's stop defining Africa as some place that, you know, safety does not prevail because it does and you have beautiful people in Africa. Um, you stay with people you know, but like I said, I've been here 10 years, never had any issue to, to be concerned about my safety per se. Um, obviously, you meet uh, checkpoints like you meet everywhere in the world. Politeness is number one. You have to be polite to whoever is at the checkpoint. Whether you speak the language or not, you have to be polite to them. And they will give you respect back. Okay, I mean, I do that anywhere in the world. If I get stopped by police in a pub in London, the same respect I give him, I give the same respect to an army or police officer who stops me. Basic life rules. Respect. You respect me, I respect you. It's simple as that. I came back without I believe in this country and I, and this is this is my this is my country and we have to be part of the narratives and only us can make changes. Our melanin sisters are killing it. Oh my goodness, look at that skin. She must be British or something. She's got a British accent. This country. We can't point fingers at people and say why aren't they doing this, why aren't they doing that. It's important for us to make um, changes in this country, to build a home and a future for our children, our great grandchildren. Whoa, we're the leaders of this country. Do you know that a lot of South Sudanese are living abroad? Yes. I mean, it's not a message to them. What would that message be? What I'd like to say is, guys, whatever qualifications you have, come home. We need you all. We need you. This is where it's happening, South Sudan. This is a place where things can happen overnight. Just take a flight, get on it, and come home. How long have you been in South Sudan? I've been here since 2008, but I got on and off. Yeah. Do you regret moving back in? Oh, I'm never going back to Oz. Never. Wow. <laughs> never. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you, thank you. And now we're going to do the whole. I mean, hey. The whole. I mean, he's like teaching me, he's teaching me again. So, what do you want to do? You want to do that. You're not doing that one. Now, let me, let's take a camera and let this guy see you. Okay. Okay.
No, 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 why are you smiling so much? I've known you from the YouTube. From YouTube? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Yo, that is so cool. <laughs> that is just so cool. What a buyer. You've made it. You've made it. Man, oh, Ghana. from Ghana. What's up? Cool, bro. How are you doing? Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad I got you on camera, man. Tell me something about South Sudan. It's good, as you see. As you Taking this. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Thank you so much for talking to me, man. Amazing. Wow. Good. Yay. I, I never knew a lot of people know me in this country. No, go there, no, go there. I go there, I go there. Yo. I never knew people know me in this country, man. Like, I'm seeing people and they're like, I know you from Ghana. Like, hey. Hey. Tell me where you're watching me from, yeah? Because. I think I need to know. No, or... Yeah, tell me too. Tell me to where you're watching me from. And just, you know, just leave it in the comments and subscribe, guys. Let's support a sister. And I mean, I'm here to be educated because I think that I have so much to learn about Africa, you know, as well. And, you know, I'm here to learn and I'm here to also, you know, contribute to the African narrative by changing the African narrative. So let me know where you're from too. Originally from, let me know. Maybe you might be in Europe watching me, but let me know where you are originally from. Okay, leave that in the comment section. That's amazing. I mean, getting known in some of this country. Maybe I keep my autograph. <laughs> my truth. I love, I love what the Myers love. I love the way he loves. I just love it. This guy. Oh my goodness, I just can't wait to, to just watch the series of videos that he's already, you know, that are already on YouTube. But I'm so grateful to, to be able to react to his um to his videos and it's a blessing and honestly I just love the way he loves, you know, I love it. Yeah, please guys, me too, you know, just subscribe to my video, um, make sure you comment, like and subscribe and turn on your post notifications on so you don't miss all the other videos that are coming. I will give my honest opinion each time and let's, you know, let's change the African narrative. So it's your girl Connie and thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.